universally, every time I post a video that shows a power graph showing like power over time used by some device, people ask me, how do you do that? And uh, the answer is these guys. These are third reality smart Zigbee power outlets. And I've just bought a bunch of these. I use them everywhere. I have one permanently plugged in at my desk and right now it's running this Switchberry. It's a PTP hardware switch for the Raspberry Pi compute module. And uh, it's just sitting there measuring the power over time and it also lets me remote control power on and off different uh, devices that are plugged into it. This is my Utility 2 power monitor, and because these all feed in using Zigbee straight into Home Assistant, I can, on my phone, monitor them all. This one is not plugged in, obviously, uh, but I can also just turn things on and off. So if I want to turn off this, uh, this Pi over here from anywhere in the world through my VPN, I can just hit that, and it's off. I also use them for my servers. So in here, there's that uh, little smart uh, radar thing detecting my presence. In here, I have one on the HL15 NAS, and it is right here, marked HL15. Now, you might be like, Jeff, there's a button here just to turn that whole thing off, and that'd be terrible if you just accidentally turned off your NAS while it was writing something. Well, I added a little automation in Home Assistant that when I press it, it says, are you sure? I accidentally did that one time, so you can hit cancel and it won't shut off the NAS. Uh, but because of that, I can monitor all the power on all these devices over time. I can build up uh, kind of information about what things use the most power. And uh, I also use them for smart capabilities. Like I have these buttons in a few places. Uh, so for my workbench over here, when I want to turn on all the lighting, I just press this button. It turns on the switch over here, which is plugged into a uh, splitter or something like that. And it turns on the under lighting and the lighting up at the top. So. Uh, they're very handy for being smart. They're very handy for measuring power. They're very handy for remotely turning on and off devices. And the accuracy has been pretty good. I've compared it to uh, the output from this guy, the Matrix MPM 1010, which is a very nice current and power monitor. And they're always within a watt or two. So, you know, unless you have strange setups and strange devices, these little outlets are great for monitoring power and remote controlling power. Over here at the main shooting area, I also have these studio lights, and they're all on smart outlets. I have a couple sets of them for this so I can turn on and off different parts. Because the dumb proprietary app thing that Amaran uses, or Aperture or whatever, the Citus Link or something, it's not like standards based, so I can't plug it into Home Assistant. So instead of doing all that stuff, I just used smart outlets. But some people have also asked, like, what, uh, you know, if, are, are there any risks with running higher power appliances and things through them? So far, I have not encountered any. I'm running my clothes washer on one at home so I can shut it off if there's a floor leak detected under it. Uh, I'm running my laser printer at home off of one, and that uses 12 to 1400 watts sometimes when it's powering on. Uh, and around the studio, I've never had any problems with flakiness or power issues. Uh, the one thing that's annoying about them is they do get firmware updates, maybe every six months to a year. When that happens, it's like all of them are like, oh, I need a firmware update. And so you can trigger that manually, but you have to, it, it turns on and off whenever it does the update. So you kind of have to schedule in, it takes a little while per update, and you know, that, that's a little annoying. That's the one downside to them. You don't, probably don't have to, but it's like, with any device that's smart and wireless, I don't want to leave the firmware running some ancient version because of security reasons. And I also have some other smart outlets in here. Uh, I used to use these guys. These are Wi-Fi, they're Shelly plugs, and they work pretty well too, but they're Wi-Fi devices. So your Wi-Fi network is cluttered up with these things and they're a little more annoying to configure. I like having the Zigbee stuff because it's just a completely separate network and it's not connected to my Wi-Fi. I don't have to worry about IoT VLANs and all that. And uh, there's also like Z-Wave outlets like this one that I used for a while. I don't even know the brand of that thing. You know, with, with all the smart junk that I have, those outlets are probably the number one thing, the, the best thing that I have in this entire studio that helps me be more productive, measuring power, turning things on and off remote controlling stuff. And yeah, it's just a, a third reality smart Zigbee outlet. And I'll put a link in the description where you can get these things. They're not super cheap, but they're not super expensive either. I buy them in four packs and I probably have like eight four packs by now. So, you know, between work and uh, home. And people also ask me a little bit about this. Like this is a graph that I built using Apex charts. I'll show the configuration for it just in case 
you want to see that. And, uh, you know, on level two, Jeff, I don't care if I don't have the most brilliantly edited videos. You might be wondering what all these dates are on the side. That's something fun. Anyway, um, Apex Charts card configuration. So this is the configuration for this card to get power from utility power monitor power. Uh, you can customize it to your liking. Uh, but Apex Charts card is a nice uh, plugin for Home Assistant that I have used quite a bit. But yeah, that's that. And then these are just switches. I have my 3D printers on them. So remotely, when I see a 3D print is done, I can remotely turn off the printer completely. Like I never have these running. I never, 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 never. Don't ever have anything connected to any network running 24-7. It's IoT stuff. It's not just because it's bamboo. I don't leave my Prusa on either because like, it's an IoT device. I, they don't need to be on if they're not doing something actively. But when I want to fire off a print, I just turn on the outlet and then wait about 30 seconds for it to come online. And then I send the print over to it. All remote, all awesome. No security problem because the thing is powered off. I even have it over here, like on this G4. There's one up here because this G4 actually uses like 15 or 20 watts when it's shut down, which is crazy. Back in the days when Energy Star was like a new thing and efficiency wasn't something Apple cared about. It's funny that this thing, when it's powered off, uses more power than a modern M4 Mac Mini running at like a, a normal workload. And then I, st I also have some switches over on some of these guys because it's good to have the ability to uh, check on the power and alert myself if it's using more than the normal amount of power because that might mean something is blowing up and I don't want to destroy vintage electronics. So that's the story with the outlets and if there's anything else that I didn't cover that you want me to cover or something else that you want me to post in the comments or something, let me know down below. And uh, yeah, this is level two Jeff, so there's no, there's no uh, real uh, rhyme or reason to this video. It's just something that after like the hundredth time I get asked on some videos, I'm like, I should just make a video talking about how I do this so that I can refer people to it. And now I have that. So see you later.